This is the month of January, marking a new year in the currently predominant calendar. A few days ago, a new presidential administration was inaugurated for our nation. Will we have a new pandemic? I hope so. I have recounted two past pandemics of medical diseases and how they were accompanied by pandemics of illogic, falsehoods, hatred, and unnecessary mutual destruction. What we need now is a pandemic of logic, truth, and love. I wish to be part of such, and I invite you to work toward that same goal. But that's an extremely tall order, and I really can't say how to accomplish it. However, I believe it must be done, and I believe I can offer a few helpful tidbits of what we can do. One problem is expressed in a quotation attributed to Winston Churchill, quote, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on, unquote. Apparently it's uncertain whether Churchill actually said this. In any event, the maxim has been around for some time in various forms, and may first have been published by Jonathan Swift in the Examiner in 1710 in the form, quote, falsehood flies and the truth comes limping after it, unquote. The concept is the same either way, namely that falsehood is much faster than truth. Why? Here's why. It takes little time to find hydroxychloroquine listed in a book, but much time to run clinical trials and evaluate evidence. It takes little time to type a tweet, but much more to write a scientific paper and get it through peer review. Yes, truth really is slower than falsehood, and there are consequences. It may happen, in fact often does, that we need to know something but don't. In such circumstances, we tend to make things up, grasping at straws. This is dangerous. Those who know that truth is essential must have patience. For example, even as more and more of us are vaccinated against COVID-19, we should continue wearing face masks and separating ourselves until we have solid knowledge of the situation and of remaining risks. Please educate yourself from a reputable source, such as the Mayo Clinic, Wikipedia, or your health care service. There are also steps we can take toward the future. I believe our education system needs to better equip our future citizens to discern truth. This is a long recognized need still waiting to be fulfilled. It was voiced in 1947, for instance, by a young student at Morehouse College named Martin Luther King Jr. In the student newspaper he wrote, Quote, education must also train one for quick, resolute, and effective thinking. To think incisively and to think for oneself is very difficult. We are prone to let our mental life become invaded by legions of half-truths, prejudices, and propaganda. At this point, I often wonder whether or not education is fulfilling its purpose. A great majority of the so-called educated people do not think logically and scientifically. Even the press, the classroom, the platform, and the pulpit in many instances do not give us objective and unbiased truths. To save men from the morass of propaganda, in my opinion, is one of the chief aims of education. Education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence to discern the true from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. Propaganda, by the way, often occurs not in the form of overt statements, but in more subtle fashion, such as by the wording of slogans. I noticed, for instance, that Stop the Steal was the slogan of the people who were trying to steal the election. Pro-life is the slogan of anti-abortion people, 
rather than of anti-death penalty or anti-war or pro-vaccination people. Along these lines, some people are claiming that Twitter and Facebook blocking or warning about posts from politicians constitutes censorship and violation of free speech. The censorship refers to government action, not selective action by individuals and non-governmental businesses, and free speech only guarantees the right to say what you wish, not the right to require others to transmit what you say. As used to be said, you must supply your own soapbox. Now I would like to call forth the words of another great biologist, Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck, who promoted the theory of evolution half a century before Wallace and Darwin, though he did not foresee that nat natural selection played a role. He wrote, quote, it is not enough to discover and prove a useful truth previously unknown, but that it is necessary also to be able to propagate it and get it recognized. Toward that end, I just donated to Snopes.com, a fact-checking website. We have, for some time, been members of and regular donors to our local public broadcast station, KQED, and to Wikipedia. We subscribe to the East Bay Times, the Washington Post, and the New York Times. We are active in an archaeological society and make donations to its scholarship fund, which has an emphasis on enabling students of Native American ancestry to unearth their own history. There are also actions which we can take based on knowledge already gained. An urgent need is to respond to misinformation about the virus and about vaccines. Remember, when you try to pass on information, be kind. Instead of insisting, refer people to your sources. Don't just rely on government established regulations and guidelines, but also talk about the need to protect other people by being responsible when, we, when taking actions that may spread disease and spread love as well as truth. For instance, we must not just rely on a court decision to require a county clerk to grant marriage licenses to same-sex couples. We must also lead the county clerk to understand that it is right to grant marriage licenses without regard for the gender composition of the couple. In spreading love, we should not assume that those of other faiths are necessarily opposed to our values. While I have been disappointed and perplexed by the political orientation of many evangelical Christians, we share fundamental values with them and with other faiths. I have found encouragement in the words of one prominent evangelical and author, speaker, and Bible scholar named Beth Moore of Living Proof Ministries, who on January 6th tweeted, I don't know the Jesus some have paraded and waved around in the middle of this treachery today. They may be acting in the name of some other Jesus, but that's not the Jesus of the Gospels. This proposal to start a pandemic of truth and love is still a tall order. So I would like to conclude with some more words of encouragement from the poem, The Hill We Climb, by Amanda Gorman, which she read at the inauguration this past Wednesday. What she says of democracy is true for all of truth and love. While democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we trust. For while we have our eyes on the future, History has its eyes on us. I believe history will have its eyes on us. Will we take this opportunity to spread truth and love, hoping to begin a new pandemic? Thank you.